Coming up on this week's episode, SAFE expresses concerns about FAA flight instruction policy change. Also, Navy improves hypoxia training with new normobaric hypoxia trainer and remote drone training now available at Embry-Riddle. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training. This is a weekly program dedicated to all things flight training, from future pilots, current pilots, and to anyone interested in the aviation world. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. In a June 4th letter from the FAA, a new policy was announced by the FAA, aligning the recent Warbird Adventures decision with 91.319 and defining flight instruction as carrying persons or property for compensation or higher. This reverses historic FAA guidance and also 8900.1, which defines flight instruction as educational. This new policy would also prevent flight instruction in all experimental aircraft without a letter of deviation authority. An additional downstream legal consequences of this FAA policy reversal are also frightening in terms of medical requirements and liability for CFIs. This new FAA policy is based on the Gregory Morris legal interpretation from 2014 and is opposed by a consortium of professional aviation groups. There are more than 27,000 amateur built aircraft, 39,000 321 experimental manned aircraft currently in the registry, with numbers growing by nearly 1,000 aircraft annually. The pilots of these planes would be without instruction without LODAS, and this impacts both initial training and safety for certificated pilots. The Aligned Aviation Group sent a strongly worded objection opposing this destructive FAA policy reversal. We have more exciting news after the break. Affordable and economical. Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. The aircraft can use as little as 2.5 gallons per hour in a flight school setting, with multiple students and instructors each day. This means that 13.2 gallons of fuel can effectively give you as much as 5 hours of endurance. Learn more about what the Pipistrol Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrol-usa.com. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the flight training industry, we're going to be summarizing some shorter but interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Department of Air Force selected Ebbing National Guard Base, Fort Smith, Arkansas, as the preferred location to establish an F-35 Lightning II training center for foreign military SAIL participants and at the new location for the 425th Fighter Squadron, a Republic of Singapore Air Force F-16 Fighting Falcon training unit currently based at Luke Air Force Base, Arizona. Coast Flight Training has announced a new program designed to help close the aviation skills gap by making flight training more affordable. Through a partnership with Meritize, pilots and training will now be eligible for merit-based financing, which can in many cases reward individual borrowers for their past educational and military experiences. The induction of the new financing option offered on the Meritize platform is designed to create a more inclusive and affordable pathway to careers in the commercial aviation industry. The FAA notes that as summer approaches, we can expect a rise in airport traffic in the air and on the runways. With this in mind, the feds are redoubling their efforts to offer guidance, resources, and expertise to preempt any airfield errors by general aviation pilots. 
especially those who have spent a year away from the cockpit. On June 16th, the FAA is hosting a runway safety town hall for all general aviation pilots. It will be a live online event that will offer best practices and a lively discussion from GA pilots, air traffic controllers, and runway safety experts. International rotorcraft safety organizations, regional safety teams, and other global safety stakeholders are pleased to announce the establishment of the Vertical Aviation Safety Team in cooperation and collaboration with the worldwide vertical flight community. VAST aims to achieve a vision of zero fatal accidents, providing safety above all. In pursuit of that vision, VAST will use data-informed, consensus-based approach to better harmonize, coordinate, and implement global safety information, resources, and programs, and to support regional safety efforts. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. The Naval Aviation Training Systems and Ranges Program Office Norma Barrick Hypoxia Trainer Team recently designed, delivered, installed, and began support of the NHT at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, the first trainer of its kind eliminating common hypoxia training injuries. The legacy low-pressure chamber trainer used in hypoxia training for pilots and aircrew often caused decompression and barotrauma sickness. The leading causal factors for training injuries in the Naval Aviation Survival Training Program. The NHT design not only eliminates the risk of barotrauma and decompression sickness, but it also can simulate high altitude flight while accommodating up to 12 personnel, including six aircrew and two pilot co-pilot teams monitored by two inside observers. Borrowed from the success of student trained on the reduced oxygen breathing device, the team included flight simulators and controls to add realism and allow air crew to practice emergency procedures specific to their naval air training and operating procedures standardization aircraft. This is the first time in naval aviation history that fixed wing non-ejection seat pilots are able to practice in a state of hypoxia. We have more news after the break that you don't want to miss. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at swiftfuelsavgas.com. I believe that if people use the landing doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. Welcome back. This is our last top story of the show. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's worldwide campus recently received a first-of-its-kind waiver from the FAA that will allow students to remotely pilot UAS through online video platforms like Zoom. This is a big deal, said Dr. David Thirtyacre, College of Aeronautics Assistant Professor and Department of Flight Chair. We've worked closely with the FAA on this project for two years and now have the ability to let students fly complex drones that are not at their location from anywhere in the United States. This opens up all sorts of training and opportunities for our students, allowing what is known as remote split operations. The waiver gives Embry-Riddle students a jump on a valuable technology. It is the first of its type to be granted to a civilian organization, 30 Acre said. 
Dr. Joseph Serretta, associate professor of aeronautical science who submitted the waiver request to the FAA, said RSO is especially important for worldwide campus students who may not be able to fly drones where they live. It will also allow students to fly sophisticated aircraft with complex equipment, such as multispectral sensors and thermal cameras, to which they might not otherwise have access. Currently, the worldwide campus is the only Embry-Riddle's three campuses that has been granted this permission. Well, that does it for our show today, your one-stop shop for all things flight training. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to leave a comment. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.